Good afternoon. Welcome back to the channel. This video is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Do your own research. Make your own decisions. All right, guys. So in this video, I just want to, it's going to be a little bit different. I just want to explain what I do for a living because I've never really gone over this in depth. Um, just it might help uh, moving forward. And just for full transparency, I'm going to go over this. Um, and I will say to start that, you know, I definitely don't consider myself an expert. You know, my general position on all this is that smarter people with more experience should be covering this space. Um, it, it is a tragedy that 95 plus percent of people that are content creators in this space have no experience in tech. And I say that not because I think that that they mean that that means they shouldn't be covering the space. I think as long as you're if you're covering this space, if you're being very honest and straightforward about your general level of knowledge, understanding and experience, I, I have no issues with with anything. Um, but a lot of times people that have literally no experience ever in anything ever relating to technology, they talk as if they're industry experts and just listening to them, I, I can clearly tell they have no clue what they're talking about. So, and, and in general sense, guys, I, I will openly say that I really wish I did not feel the need to get on here a couple of years ago. And, and I wish I didn't feel the need to stay on here, but the, the, the bar has been set so low in this space that I, I just, it, it's, I, I can't express in words how low the bar is set and how painful it must be for many people who work in tech to have to listen to a lot of the things that are said from a lot of these content creators. Okay, so I sell, and I say this often that you know I, I sell software for a living because I do. It is a part of the package that I sell. Um, it, it's probably not the majority of it. If you look at the total amount that a company would pay for our services annually, the software component is actually a very small component. Um, the employee benefits is really where uh, the big line items come in. So there's several different main enterprise systems that pretty much all companies use. Now, some use other ones as well, but most companies are gonna have some type of HRIS system. And this is the thing that manages their entire workforce, all their employees, payroll, taxes, benefits, 401k, onboarding, performance reviews, so on and so forth. And so that's what I do, okay? Other things, CRMs, um, a lot of companies have CRMs. This is for all of their clients and all of their prospects, um, just to keep track of that. So Salesforce is a very popular CRM. And then also ERP systems. This is where they're going to primarily be doing most of their accounting and finance, job costing, things of that nature. So for the most part, most companies are going to have at least three different enterprise systems. And more times than not, especially with the larger companies, they're going to have more than that. OK, and a lot of other complementary systems that they use, internal messaging systems, things like Slack. Um, so I just want to go over that to start. Um, OK, so the technology that I sell, it manages employee benefits. So think about like if you're working for a large corporation and you're going to enroll in benefits every year, the platform that you would be going on to enroll in benefits is the platform that I sell. Um, also payroll tax filing, 401k administration, performance reviews, recruiting and onboarding, so on and so forth. Also included in this, um, so I moved out of just the tech only space a, few, a couple years ago and I got into uh, health insurance more or less. Um, health insurance, workers' compensation, retirement services, things of that nature. And, and it moved, I moved from more of, of just like a, just working in the SaaS space, um, software as a service space, to more of a consulting role. So, and, and I work with smaller businesses. I do not work with like companies like the size of Walmart, primarily because the solution that I sell really is a scaling solution. And the reason that I'm doing this video today is because I am meeting with a company in the industry this week. Um, this first time that I've done that since I've been uh, since I got into crypto, but I am meeting with a company in the industry this week. Uh, so pretty excited about that. But that kind of sparked the the interest for me to even do this video. But so I really target, let's say, 50 employees all the way up to 500 employees, that general employee size. 
Um, I will write a company that's, you know, 15 or 20 employees, but that, that's really the ideal target range for me. And the reason why our solution is best for small to medium sized businesses is because what we do is we give them the ability to access big company benefit plans. So if you're a small business, you're going to get you're going to get hit pretty hard when it comes to shopping for health insurance. What our solution does is it puts their small, let's say it's a hundred person tech company, which is the one that I'm going to be meeting with um, them going out on the open market and getting employee benefits as a hundred employee tech company. They're going to get rated based off a hundred employee employee company, as opposed to with something like our solution, we offer them pricing and rates based on a much, much, much larger group hundreds of thousands of employees. And so it allows them to access benefit plans and offerings that they wouldn't be able to in the open market, okay? So that's what I mean by a scaling solution. What our solution is designed to do, and numerous crypto companies, I'm not gonna name them off just because of uh, confidentiality reasons, uh, have used our platform to scale. So really what it's designed to do is it's designed to give small to medium-sized businesses all the resources that a large corporation has so they can scale as quickly as possible. Let's say that they have some funding coming in from their VCs or private equity or whatever it may be, and they want to grow from 500 or 50 employees to 500 employees in a matter of three or four years, which is insane growth. And our platform is something that they would use to scale up to that size. Now, once they get to that size, they normally leave our platform because at that point, they have the infrastructure in place, they have the size and the scale to no longer need our services. So our, our platform is really just to help them get from point A to point B as quickly as possible. I also sell workers' compensation insurance, uh, EPLI. This is essentially just, let's say that this is insurance that protects you in cases where somebody you fire somebody, they leave, and then they sue you. Um, also retirement services is included with our package. Now I'm not a financial advisor. I don't offer financial advice. What we offer is the technology to administer the 401k. Okay. So we don't actually do any financial advising ourselves, but if you think about like, if you ever work for a large corporation and you want to go check your 401k more times than not, you'll have some type of application, um, you can use to go on and make changes or to check the performance. That's the type of stuff that I sell. Also, HR and compliance con consultation. So included in our package, we also give them HR and compliance consultants. So let's just say when the pandemic happened, everybody was running, companies were running around like, you know, a chicken with their head cut off because they didn't know what to do. They didn't understand the payment protection program. They didn't understand all the new changes with compliance. Our solution would have had consultants there to walk them through what they need to do. And then also just legal defense. We also offer that as well. So yeah, while I do sell technology, I also sell all these other services as well. And just for some perspective here, if I were to sign up a 200 employee company, the, or just let's say a 100, that makes it easy. So about a 100 employee company, uh, if they had a decent amount 70, 80, 90% of their employees participating on benefits, that deal size would be roughly around a million dollars a year. So th those are the type size things that I'm talking about. Um, and the technology portion of that would actually be a very small line item relative to the everything else that's included. So I just wanted to go over that, guys. I mean, I know I, I don't try to suggest that I'm an expert in any way. Uh, but relative to the field, relative to all the other content creators, um, I, I feel like I probably have a better handle on this than a lot, a, a large majority of them. Um, and, and that's only because of the last five years and what I've been doing on a day to day basis. Like had this happened at, at an earlier point in my life, none of this would have made sense to me because before I started doing this for a living, uh, software in general didn't make sense to me. And it's still like, I, I'm still really in my personal life, not a very techie person. Uh, I just kind of understand this to some degree because of what I do for a living. Um, and, and, and I say that guys, I'm gonna make a really important point. I hope you're still watching. 
if you're watching this video and you have literally no experience whatsoever in tech, and I know a lot of y'all don't, and, and it, like, it blows me away that you guys figured this out and that you're even still here. I'm going to be 100% honest with you because I know so many, and I've shown this to some of y'all. So my last company, which is, you know, they're referenced um, quite frequently on CNBC. I'll just put it that way. But, uh, and, and I showed y'all my, you know, my LinkedIn page about a year, a year and a half ago. Um, and, and I've connected with a lot of y'all on LinkedIn. But so, let's see here, my last company, I was, the point that I'm getting to guys is that I've talked to numerous executives in the tech space over the last two years about blockchain, crypto, distributed ledger systems, so on and so forth. And when I tell you that so many of you have front ran tech executives that make over half a million a year, I'm being as about as dead honest as I can be, because there are so many executive level vice presidents in the tech space that have no clue what's happening with this. Absolutely none. Um, and in my opinion, I think it's because the degree to which they are institutionalized, because, you know, in, in, in this is very much, in my opinion, on a need to know basis within the tech world. Like, you know, if you work for a big tech company, let's just say something like a SAP or a Salesforce or somebody like that, um, or like a Workday or an ADP, the, the employees of those companies have no clue that anything ever relating to their company in blockchain technology, that they don't know anything is going on, okay? Um, because nothing is really told, no, nothing is really said about blockchain tech and distributed ledger technology right now in most of the enterprise software space. And so many higher level executive VPs that make over half a million a year have absolutely no clue what's going on with this. And so if you have no experience in tech and you have figured this out, um, I mean, I'm being dead serious. It's very impressive. I know I wouldn't have. I'll just put it that way. Um, if I was still doing my old job, none of this shit would make sense to me. And, you know, I don't know if I would have the level of discernment to just be able to solely follow the facts and the evidence given it just it just wouldn't have made sense to me. I'll just put it that way. Um, and, and I think that a lot of these uh, white collar tech jobs, especially the executive level jobs, I think that the, a lot of these people are just very institutionalized and they don't believe that it would be possible for something like this to be going on without anybody knowing about it, without the media telling them, without their, without their CEOs telling them, right? So yeah, um, just wanted to make that point. You, you have front ran so many executive level VPs in the tech space. You have no, you have absolutely no idea. Um, and, and in my opinion, all of this, the stuff that's happening at a very high level with this behind the scenes, behind the scenes implementation that I refer to, um, I think this is very much on a need to know basis. I think that there's tons of NDAs out there. Um, and, and I think the minimal amount of information is released to the public. So those are my thoughts, guys, not financial advice. Uh, I just wanted to put this out. Um, I just full transparency. This is what I do for a living. And it uh, doesn't make me an expert. And in, in my general position is that I think smarter people should be on here covering this. And I wish, I hope that at some point in time, that is the case where people who thoroughly understand this much, much, I mean, guys, I have subscribers that are engineers, solutions, architects, developers. I mean, I have subscribers that understand this better than I do. Okay. And it's just, it is a tragedy when it when it comes to the content creator space in crypto and their general knowledge and comprehension of technology it is it is a hundred percent a tragedy so anyways that's it that's all i have not financial advice do your own research take care have a good day i'll see you in the next video